Running out of storage space on your iPhone or for your photo backups, I think is a problem we've all run into. But how do you solve it, right? I don't know about you, but I don't really like subscriptions as much as we end up having them anyways. So what's your other option? Well, hosting the storage yourself with something like this maybe from Asus Store. This is their Flash Store 12 Pro Gen 2. And I wasn't a huge fan of the first one. I like the idea, but to be honest, it wasn't fast enough. So you're putting fast storage and you're ending up with none of the performance. They have told me they have solved that problem on this Gen 2. This is now fast enough to mostly saturate the 10 gigabit ports and we're gonna find out if they lied. So in the box here, we've got a power cable, power brick, 12 volt, 10 amp, 120 watt power brick there. We've got a actually pretty long power cable, so that looks nice. See those in a sec and then the NAS. Now the cool thing about this unit, unlike a lot of the NAS units you can just buy off the shelf, you'll notice it's pretty small. This is an NVMe based NAS. So instead of hard drives, it uses M.2 SSDs. Cost wise, not as cheap for the storage per terabyte as you would get with a hard drive, but it is in theory quite a bit faster. On the back, we've got dual RJ45 10 gigabit ethernet ports, two 10 gigabit USB type A ports, and two USB 4 40 gig ports. That's, that's a lot of connectivity right here. And you could use that USB 4 for presumably an eGPU. You could even use it for like a Thunderbolt to 25 gigabit NIC if you want it, I guess. Pretty cool, we've got a reset button and then a power jack over here. There's also a Kensington lock if that's something you need. And then on the front, another USB port. Oh, it's also 10 gigabit. That's pretty much it for the IO. Is there a power button? Oh, 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 I'm stupid. Hey, there's a power button. I think there's RGB here, so it'll probably be a bit more obvious once it's plugged in. But before I open it, I think there's another thing in the box. Ah, yes, cables. We've got propaganda here, AI master. I guess I'll leave that here. What else do we got? Oh, it actually comes with two ethernet cables. That's cool. Look at this, lttstore.com, precision screwdriver kit, perfect thing for taking apart your Asus store NAS if you were to buy one. I could live in a universe where these would be toolless. Open, close. Ah, yes. Okay, so you can see the fan there. You see they use a USB type A port to be like a hot swap pluggable connector for the fan. And they do still use a normal four pin fan connector on the board, so you could in theory change this to a different fan. This is an 80 millimeter fan, beautiful. So if you wanna swap that out, you could. Just make sure it's a thin boy. Look at all those chickens. And by chickens, I mean M.2 slots. Sheesh. Being the flash door 12, you can see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six slots on this side. But then there's also more slots on the other side, which, how do I get at those? Boom, look at that, more M.2 slots. The CMOS battery is right there if you need to change it, so it's easily accessible. It's not like tucked underneath anything. And then on this side, we can see our RAM, which is also super easy to access. Uh, by default, this kit ships with a DDR5-5600 16 gigabyte CL46 stick, uh, but there is two slots. So I guess in theory you could add more. You could add another stick or take this one out and put your own stick. Now, if you've been looking at this closely, you can see that they actually print the speed of each port on here. Now, this is a newer CPU in this unit that's a lot faster than the previous one. It's AMD Ryzen powered. Uh, so there's more PCIe lanes from what I understand, but there is still not enough to run 12 SSDs at all Gen 4x4. So we've got one Gen 4x4, uh, three Gen 4x2, two Gen 4x1 on this side, and then on the other side, two more Gen 4x1, two Gen 3x1s, a Gen 3x4 and a Gen 3x2. That is a lot of <laughs> different specs. And part of my brain goes, ah, that's kind of, Bunky, but I also understand. There's only so many lanes that they get off of whatever chip that they're putting in here, so they have to make concessions somewhere. It's probably not gonna matter anyways, because the combined performance of that many SSDs is far and away going to exceed the amount of networking you have, which is only 20 gigabit. Even if you were to put in like a 25 gig NIC, that's only two and a half plus gigabytes a second, which realistically one SSD could saturate. So yes, it's a little confusing, it's not, in my brain, my first choice. But at the end of the day, for a real world application, it probably doesn't matter. 
Speaking of SSDs, I have some. Whew. This is <laughs> so supremely overkill, but uh, I don't really care. I do have seven of these Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus 8 terabyte drives, which are just about the beefiest possible SSDs you could install in here. It is nice and easy to install SSDs in here. They got little toolless doohickeys. You just kind of push back and it pops into place, which is nice. Uh, that do, does kind of beg the question of why they made it so you have to use a screwdriver to open it because at that point you would have a screwdriver. If you're wondering about thermals, I suspect these are gonna get pretty hot. Not as hot as if we had 12 SSDs in there and we're not really pushing these SSDs to the max, um, but you'll notice there are extra like threaded inserts here and those are for heat sinks that don't come with this unit. You have to purchase separately. Um, and they're not that cheap. To get enough for one side for six SSDs is 39 US dollars. Oh, I forgot to mention also, there is some indicator lights on the top. We've got power, what looks like a heartbeat. I guess maybe that's like, if there's an error that will light up red. We've got networking and a storage indicator. All right, let's get this thing plugged in and powered on. But not before I tell you about our sponsor. Oh snap iPhone accessories usually kind of suck. So this Valentine's Day, get yourself and your partner one that's designed not to suck. It's crazy thin, 2.5 millimeters thin, which is smaller than almost any camera bump, meaning no more awkward moments where your phone gets stuck in your pocket. But, or wait, what does it do exactly? Well, besides being both a finger grip and a kickstand, it's magnetic. So you can use your MagSafe accessories or chargers right on top of it. Plus, it even comes with adhesive, so you can use it on any phone. So head over to osnap.com slash short circuit to get one for yourself and 50% off another for your partner. We'll have it linked down below. After all, flowers die, magnets last forever. It just says to turn it on, that's the end of the instructions. Oh, actually I guess it says to download Asus Control Center or AI Master on my phone. Maybe I'll try AI Master, that sounds like fun. Oh, I see lights. Okay, so we got power. I guess this indicator light also shows green if things are good and no networking because yeah, I didn't plug in the networking. That makes sense. Now, speaking of networking, I have a Ubiquiti Flex XG switch over here. This has four 10 gigabit ports. So what we're gonna do for our little testy test is plug both of them into the ASUS store. And then I have two different laptops that we're gonna connect both with 10 gig so we can test the full 20 gig capacity of this thing in a few minutes here. There we go, blue light on networking. So in theory, I can now find this maybe? Hey, wow, that was quick, instantly. Found it on the same network, cool. One click setup, oh boy. Do I dare? I don't wanna like reset it and have to do it again, but I'm curious what the one click setup does. Let's do it, cause like, okay, that was not one click, brother. Look at all this stuff I have to do. That's not one click, you liars. I'm gonna go with max capacity. Oh, cannot connect to your server. Oh no, I, I can't imagine what possibly happened. Oh, I just unplugged the power. Oh no. <laughs> well, right off the bat, we have a NAS here. I don't know how it set it up. I mean, we got activity monitor. You can see our process usage, drive usage. Oh, here we go. Total capacity is 50 terabytes. And it, did, oh my God, it did a RAID zero. I guess that is maximum capacity, but like, to allow in the one click setup, somebody that picks maximum capacity to do a RAID zero is a little sketchy. RAID zero is striping all of the disks. That means if you write a file, say like a one gigabyte file, it's gonna split that one gig file into however many drives you have worth of pieces and store a piece on each drive. This is great for performance and great for lots of capacity, but if any of those SSDs die, you lose everything. I would not recommend anyone configure their NAS like that. But let's jump over to an actual computer so we can get all the settings. In the web, like computer version, it tells you what type of RAID is gonna be used depending on what you pick. So maximum capacity is RAID zero. Balanced is RAID five, which means you have one disk worth of data protections. So you can have one of your SSDs fail and you'll, you won't lose data. And then superior data protection is RAID six, which means you can have two drives fail and not lose any data. That being said, they really need to add like a big red warning, like RAID zero is not safe. If I'm a consumer and I don't know what RAID zero is, and that's the default option, maximum capacity sounds great. I'm just gonna click that, right? I don't care. I got the system reset up as a RAID five and I'm ready 
to copy some files from our single client. So we've only got one 10 gig connection. We'll try it with a second client in a sec, but I do just want to look at the power consumption. It's trying uh, 34, 35 watts. Let's copy some files. I've got this Sonnet Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit dongle plugged into this MacBook Air, and we should be able to saturate 10 gig speeds, no problem. So I've got Addo Disk Benchmark writing to our network share. It's writing random data on a block size of one megabyte in four streams. So it's opening four separate connections to the device. It seems like it can handle writing at one gigabyte per second consistently. Looks around 55, 56 watts. Let me grab the other laptop while I let this run and we'll see what it does at two gigabytes a second. I think the previous version that we tested on LTT would cap out at like 500 megabytes a second. So this is already way better. So that's cool. That's a lot slower. <laughs> Uh, it might be, okay, this might be a little bit much sauce, to be honest, because I'm doing like four streams per client, but let's try two streams per, because that's what I was doing. Honestly, I'm a little confused. Okay, it can do 20 gig reads. Look at that, we're doing it right now. That's pretty cool. 10 gigabit works out to be like 1.2 gigabytes a second, and we're doing 2.4 gigabytes a second on the dot read speed. I made it work, it actually can do 20 gigabit write speed. We're doing 2.1, 2.2 gigabytes a second. It's just that I had to use RAID 0 to do it, which is not great. It feels like they should be able to do two gigabytes a second in RAID 5. We were capping out 1.6, 1.7 gigabytes a second under optimal circumstances with our two clients. In RAID 0 mode, I was able to do pretty much two gigabytes a second consistently, write speed, but overall it seems like the problem comes more from a parity calculation being slow. Read performance is great. Write performance, I really, it's kind of the same problem as last time with the original Flash Store. It has, a lot of networking, but it can't quite use it all. To be honest, for most people, if you only have one client that you're ever gonna connect with 10 gigabit or maybe two, it's probably fine. Even if you consider our office here where we have a crazy NAS, we're usually only reaching 10, maybe 20 gigabit in a given day uh, with 10 editors working off of it. So maybe, maybe it's not that big of a problem. It just feels like the hardware is not quite specced for the networking. Especially when you consider the price. The original flash store, which could do one gigabyte a second read, and I think around five, 600 megabytes a second write, was 800 US dollars for the 12 bay or $450 for the six bay. At least that's what the price on B&H shows right now. The gen two is a thousand US dollars for the six drive and 1400 for the 12 drive. That is not cheap. $1,400 is a lot of money. That's gaming computer territory. Even if we ignore the 12 drive one and go, let's let's talk the six drive one, a thousand US dollars. At that point, I might as well just build a desktop computer and put some M.2s in it. Like, yes, they made it better. It can read at two gigabytes a second. It can almost write at two gigabytes a second, but it's really expensive. They also kind of cut some features out of the old one. It no longer has an iGPU. You notice there's no HDMI port, so we can't have a display output. Sure, you can run Plex, but you're not gonna be using any sort of hardware accelerated transcoding, and you can't install a different operating system on it, at least as far as I can see, and they don't advertise it on the product page because before they would tell you to do it by booting up into the BIOS with a monitor and stuff, but no HDMI port, how do you do that? You do get the benefit of their fancy NAS operating system and the stuff that goes with that, but there are ways around that. There's True NAS, there's Open Media Vault, there's some other projects that you can use to install NAS operating systems that are more like what you would get on something like this. I'm not gonna say the name. Like, yes, they did fix the problem I identified in the old unit. It can saturate a 10 gig connection, read and write, and if that's enough for you, great. But then they added a second 10 gig connection and didn't make it fast enough to handle that. I guess if you want an M.2 SSD NAS, and you don't want to have to fuss about building your own and installing your own operating system. The user experience was not bad. They do need to fix some things with the default selections. Maybe it could work for you. I'd probably check out the first gen one unless you need crazy performance, but man, I don't know. I don't know. It feels a bit like price gouging and it feels like this is the end of the video. So hit like, get subscribed. Let me know what you think about this thing. I don't really get it. I would build my own, but maybe you think differently. Let me know. Goodbye.